good morning and welcome today our topic is about cystic kidneys of the diseases uh, cystic diseases of the kidney and uh, in that one the most important one is adult polycystic kidney disease but that is also called as abkd and though there are other also cystic kidney diseases like medullary sponge kidney is there and uh, other things like uh, medullary cystic diseases and there are like some isolated defects of uh, tubular functions as well uh, which are not like basically cystic kidney diseases but they are included in the same section so uh, there are certain conditions in which there is a cyst formation in the kidneys as well but um, like they are a part of some, some syndromes okay so the most important topic is the adult polycystic kidney disease which we are going to study today so <coughs> adult polycystic kidney disease is a common condition um, how common um, how common it is it is like the prevalence is one ratio 1000 uh, like one in 1000 people they have Okay, and it is inherited disorder, and that inheritance is in autosomal uh, dominant uh, dominant fashion, right? So, what happens, as the name shows, it is polycystic kidney disease. So, of course, like there will be cysts in the kidney, right? Um, there could be. Uh, single cyst in the kidney or uh, even multiple cysts in the kidney so that's why there is some diagnostic criteria when we label that someone have cystic kidney disease okay so there are basically small cysts which are lined by epithelium uh, tubular epithelium and they start developing from the infancy or childhood and they keep on growing slowly and irregularly and uh, the surrounding kidney tissues is completely normal okay but as you know they keep on growing so remember one of the feature that this is the condition in which the kidneys become very much enlarged so clinically whenever we get enlarged kidneys what we can uh, we may be like many different diagnoses come into our mind for example hydronephrosis in which for example there is some blockage in the renal tract and there is collection of the uh, what you can say fluid in the kidney in the collecting duct so uh, it can cause uh, enlarged kidney okay but uh, in this one of course the kidneys can be enlarged uh, will be enlarged okay so uh, <laughs> you can say <coughs> uh, around 7 million people worldwide they have this condition okay uh, adult polycystic kidney disease so uh, what is the thing like all the cystic kidney diseases these cavities or these cysts which are formed in the in the kidney uh, uh, or like these you know what is the definition of a cyst it's a, a cavity which is lined by epithelium right so uh, what happens like sometimes this one can be filled with fluid or sometimes it could be semi-solid debris okay so there could be simple cyst uh, and simple cysts are very common i'm talking about the conditions which can be confused with this one okay so simple cyst is a very common condition which can occur in up to 50 percent of the patients who are more than 50 years of age so what it means like when you will do ultrasound in people who are more than 50 years of age half of the patients you will found cyst in their kidney okay so uh, this is a very important thing to remember okay there is something called as acquired cystic kidney disease as well like remember this one is uh, inherited right adult polycystic kidney disease is inherited there is some acquired uh, kidney uh, cystic kidney disease as well and that occur in people who are on hemodialysis chronically okay now adult polycystic kidney disease which i told you it is uh, autosomal dominant condition okay and it is a very common condition 
there is something called as autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease as well okay like that is inherited in autosomal recessive fashion and that one is like the incidence is very 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 low if you will compare with this one adult polycystic kidney disease okay so uh, what you can say what it do with the patient uh, adult polycystic kidney disease uh, is uh, like we are going to discuss that thing in this lecture basically like uh, primarily and then uh, we are like if we have time we can also discuss autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease so i told you the prevalence like just to tell you the importance how much importance it, it is and now uh, there is a gene called as polycystic kidney disease gene okay or uh, we name it as PD, pkd1 which is located on on chromosome uh, 16 okay and uh, again now there is uh, very easy to, to remember uh, this is the one which is a most uh, common type of uh, uh, you can say abnormality which can give uh, this one okay so like most of the patients which you will found is have this this uh, mutation of this chromosome okay uh, this uh, gene which is pkd1 gene which is located on chromosome 16 the second type is pkd polycystic kidney disease 2 like they name it as polycystic kidney disease 2 gene and that is located on chromosome uh, 4 okay so uh, uh, what is the important thing about this one adult polycystic kidney disease you know it you like when you found the cases of renal failure around 10 percent of the patients who have renal failure are basically due to adult polycystic kidney disease okay so patients they are generally heterozygous for mutant pkd gene okay so uh, like uh, uh, this is a very important thing so what happens basically uh, again uh, like when this gene is abnormal which is pkd gene is abnormal uh, there is abnormal proliferation and apoptosis of tubular epithelial cells which will lead to uh, cyst formation okay so there is abnormal proliferation as well as apoptosis of the tubular epithelial cells so remember that's the reason that these cysts or the cyst uh, are lined by tubular epithelium okay these these cysts are lined by tubular epithelium because you know there is abnormal proliferation as well as apoptosis of this tubular epithelium so now <laughs> many of the patients who have adult polycystic kidney disease you know uh, they have some extra renal manifestations as well and what are the extra renal manifestations uh, many of them they have hepatic cyst many of them they have hepatic cyst around 33 percent of the patients have hepatic cyst or you can say one third of the patients have hepatic cyst many of them they have mitral wall prolapse uh, you can say around 25 percent of the patient or again like one fourth of those patients have uh, mitral wall, wall prolapse and very 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 important thing guys remember this point many of them they have cerebral aneurysm okay so see whenever we uh, one tenth of the patient or ten percent of the patient one in ten patients they have this thing that's the reason whenever we diagnose anyone with adult polycystic kidney disease we always do angiography and see like if they have cerebral aneurysm or not because this aneurysm can burst and they may have hemorrhagic stroke uh, this hepatic cyst like whenever there is uh, extra renal manifestation and in one third of the patient there is hepatic cyst 
usually it doesn't cause any type of liver disease like there will be no liver failure okay so it doesn't cause any uh, what you can say uh, abnormality in the liver right so rest these are the common manifestations rest you know there can be uh, pancreas cyst pancreatic cyst there could be a cyst in um, thyroid okay there could be a cyst in ovary uh, there could be a cyst in aorta okay so uh, simply uh, uh, like uh, uh, there are many uh, extra radial manifestations which are rare but they can occur okay now what are the clinical features of this condition clinical features of this condition is first of all uh, uh, the most important things is uh, uh, most of the patients who have adult polycystic kidney disease you know they are asymptomatic okay so they they, they don't have any uh, they don't have any symptoms okay like they like the people don't know that they are uh, have uh, adult polycystic kidney disease so uh, most of them you know when they are asymptomatic so uh, they are diagnosed uh, on uh, uh, imagings okay uh, or incident it is incidental finding okay like the person came for some other uh, issue the doctor run a ultrasound and they found like they have a cyst uh, of course like not just one cyst rather many like we, when we'll discuss the diagnostic diagnostics of this condition we will talk about this thing okay uh, what is the thing or most of the patients because it is it is inherited in autosomal dominant fashion so that's why uh, most of the patients who have uh, what you can say um, this one uh, adult polycystic kidney, kidney disease uh, you are going to find a family history okay so that's why whenever we take history uh, we always ask about like you know is there anyone in the family who got renal failure at early age okay because remember this thing that all those who have adult poly APKD uh, they have renal failure at a very young age okay so that's very important whenever they have symptoms so the symptoms can range from anything like the abdominal pain okay flank pain it could be back pain or lumbar pain as well as hematuria okay so hematuria uh, of course like first of all there is microscopic hematuria and later on there can be gross hematuria and uh, many of them they have urinary concentrated concentrated concentrating different defects okay so many of them they have urinary concentrating defects as well okay so uh, whenever there is uh, extra renal manifestations uh, of course like uh, uh, one thing I uh, missed to mention over here is many of them they can have diver diverticulosis okay so uh, see and now uh, these are the completely uh, kidney uh, renal symptoms and signs right so whenever uh, some some of the patients they can present with stroke or you can say the you know the aneurysm when it is related to APKD or adult polycystic kidney disease we can co we call it as Berry's aneurysm so many of them they present with ruptured Berry aneurysm aneurysm okay so uh, of course like they present with stroke in other words okay and whenever they have ruptured Berry's aneurysm or some of them they may have they present with diverticulitis okay because you know they have diverticulitis <coughs> now a very interesting feature again uh, which these patients present with is hypertension okay now why there is hypertension in these patients there is again an interesting thing in this one because of cyst you know uh, the cyst uh, causes pressure uh, on the intradenal arteries okay so this cyst when they cause pressure on the intradenal arteries so due to these pressures there is less blood supply to many part of the kidneys and whenever this is the case 
and the kidney is getting less blood supply what will happen that the kidneys are going to activate what renin angiotensin aldosterone system and simply there will be hypertension so many patients they present with hypertension as well the when you examine them guys the most important thing is that they have enlarged palpable um, kidney okay and uh, one thing you know whenever we uh, whenever we what you can say uh, palpate their kidneys be careful not to press so hard because you know the cyst can rupture that is very important point okay like during examination don't press it too hard because the kidneys can rupture so now uh, one of the important thing uh, to mention you here is uh, of course like these are all the clinical features which uh, I am talking about which are related to APKD but uh, see most of the patients have hypertension so maybe you will found a patient of APKD and you will found the sign and symptoms of chronic hypertension like papilledema, retinopathy okay or heart diseases or and organ damage is there okay so always look for that now many of the times you know when we found the patients in clinic so we found for example uh, already renal transplanted patient so when we asked like why they get renal transplant we come to know that they have abkd and uh, this condition is running in their family and all in their family have a renal transplant okay his father get a renal transplant at the age of 40 or 45 and now he is also getting a uh, renal transplant because of that okay so uh, this is very important now due to this uh, polycystic kidney diseases uh, they have many complications as well uh, simply uh, what are the complications that cause or uh, complications of APKD uh, because they have multiple cysts you know so many of them they have um, UTIs okay or recurrent UTIs are there uh, so this there could be cyst infections okay uh, can be there hypertension is one of the complications which can lead to again chronic renal failure okay uh, and many of them they may have nephrolithiasis or stone formation okay uh, can be there so these are all the complications of uh, APKD now uh, these cysts you know uh, they are present in of course uh, both kidneys okay or they are always bilateral so this is very important point okay and uh, what happened uh, the clinical manifestation they start appearing around 20 to 25 years of age okay so the when they are young you know they don't know this thing but as they age they reach 20 25 years you know they get the clinical manifestation of this thing so the kidneys are basically normal at birth but you know then they enlarge up to 10 times in normal size so the kidneys can enlarge uh, you can say uh, up to 10 times the normal size okay uh, so this is very important thing to mention here uh, and uh, uh, most of the patients you know you will found like they will end up in end stage renal disease uh, by the age of 60 for sure right most of the patient i'm not saying all like maybe there are patients see why there is end stage renal disease in this with this patient because the cysts are there they are causing pressure on the small arterioles in the kidney there is less blood, blood supply to those areas and they are like they, those areas will start activate, acting, act, activating activating renin and tensin and the system and that's the reason you know the patient will be having this condition so this is the thing now how we investigate these patients investigations uh, of course like you know the diagnosis is radiographic okay then the diagnosis is or you can say it's a radiographic diagnosis so uh, we diagnose them on uh, on imaging okay now uh, 
the diagnostic criteria criteria is like not important to remember like all the diagnostic criteria uh, but it's very important to uh, what you can say to know uh, what is uh, the diagnostic criteria okay so the thing is uh, the diagnostic criteria uh, like which i'm talking about is um, if anyone have what you can say uh, cis okay and I, I i told you not one cis uh, if the patient age is 15 to 39 years and they have uh, three or more than that more than three okay cyst or if the patient is 40 to uh, 59 okay and they years and they have uh, what you can say uh, more than two cysts okay in each kidney okay the above one is like not in each kidney rather like overall right in this one uh, when the patient is more 40 or more than 40 so if there is two cyst in each kidney okay so uh, this is that you can say the diagnostic criteria so how we check like of course we uh, do uh, ultrasonography okay to check like either the patient have this thing or not so this is very important thing okay and uh, 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 like this is one of the thing but of course like uh, the confirmatory, confirmatory diagnosis should be made on um, genetic testing of course because there is abnormal gene in these patients so radiographic diagnosis is there we go, go for renal ultrasound uh, we found cysts we found enlarged kidneys okay in these patients and uh, we found multiple cysts uh, we found increased uh, cortical thickness okay uh, in these patients okay other than this of course we can go for ct scan okay uh, we can do genetic uh, analysis okay so genetic analysis of course like you will found uh, pkd1 or pkd2 okay uh, there are many other investigations of course, if patients have hypertension, the investigations for that. Uh, to check for the kidney failure, you will keep on checking creatinine, uh, blood, urea, nitrogen, urine examination, okay, and uh, and microscopy, of course, like uh, to to see, okay, all these things, okay, to assess hematuria and all this stuff. And what is the treatment of this condition? Uh, of course, like. Uh, the treatment goal is to uh, preserve uh, preserve the kidney functions okay uh, as long as we can so preserve the kidney functions is the goal of the thing uh, of course like it's a very uh, yeah, you can say um, disease like which run in the family so of course we uh, educate the patients uh, we tell uh, like by the way we educate the family because you know it runs in families and uh, if like uh, we found the abnormal gene we ask the family uh, to uh, what you can say uh, to, to get tested or uh, genetic counseling you know genetic counseling is very 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 important uh, in many countries you know this genetic counseling uh, of course uh, uh, concept is not there but genetic counseling of course like in many countries like uh, i know about uae and saudi you know uh, you have like whenever whenever you are getting married so they ask you to do this uh, gene testing and they test they test for beta thalassemia and many other conditions so of course like it is autosomal dominant so if autosomal dominant person is going to uh, like a disease carrier is going to uh, sorry a person who have disease is going to marry with someone who also have this condition so there is 100 percent chances that the baby, the baby will be having this condition so uh, but of course like when the one of the parent is affected so there is 50 percent chances that the baby is affected right so that's why we go for genetic counseling in these patients so uh, again like uh, treat uh, the infections okay if there is utis 
the cyst get infected treat that uh, how to treat that you know the best medication to treat the infections especially when the infections are uh, related with the cyst uh, uh, so we might we need what you can say some antibiotics which can penetrate the cyst so trimethoprim uh, sulfamethoxazole is one of the antibiotic uh, ciprofloxacin uh, is one of the antibiotic which can penetrate the uh, cyst walls okay uh, one of the thing is uh, nephrolithiasis so we ask them to take water intake okay uh, like uh, around three to four liters per day is recommended okay we, we ask them to like increase their hydration level okay so uh, and you know like uh, increase water intake if the GF gfr is good it suppress the cyst growth okay so uh, uh, we we have to treat the blood pressure as well so hypertension okay the of course like uh, the goal is to uh, keep the blood pressure in normal range or less than 130 by 80 so or like for that one the first line drug is uh, ace inhibitors okay or uh, angiotensin receptor blockers can be given um, second line drug is uh, thiazide diuretics okay and third line drug is uh, beta blocker okay beta blockers are, are the third line drugs um, <laughs> calcium channel blockers are not recommended because uh, decreased calcium entry you know uh, uh, like they are not recommended generally because they like uh, they don't have yeah, good outcomes in these patients okay so uh, that like uh, of course we have to deal all the um, all the things you know all the complications all the things which goes on this one so water intake of course three to four liters per day it prevents the uh, nephrolithiasis like it will prevent the stone formation as well as it is going to uh, reduce the progress of the skin uh, okay one of the thing which we educate them we ask them to avoid uh, sports or contact sports like rugby okay like in which that there is uh, or like even football okay because you know if anything will hit in their uh, tummy abdomen so it, it, their, their kidneys can get injured can burst open uh, so can be ruptured so this thing very important thing screen for cerebral uh, aneurysm okay because that's uh, if it is going to burst so that is going to uh, create a big problem right so uh, <laughs> one thing uh, now the important thing is that of course you know uh, uh, many of these patients they have pain as well uh, pain due to the cyst okay so for sim sim symptomatic relief sometime uh, nephrectomy can be done okay uh, or especially when there is a recurrent infection so uh, nephrectomy uh, can be done for uh, recurrent uh, infections okay uh, this is one of the thing we can do uh, or for or for relief of pain or for uh, relief of pain okay so th this can be done and now you know uh, as I told you that we are like why we are discussing these topics we are going towards the, our final topics which is acute kidney injury or uh, chronic kidney injury by the way acute kidney injury we must have done now because we had done glomerular diseases we had done tubular interstitial diseases okay all the same which lead mostly to uh, uh, acute kidney injury so uh, of course like as we know we are going towards uh, <laughs> towards like chronic uh, we, like our last topic is chronic kidney injury so like this is one of the cause of chronic or end stage uh, renal disease right so most of these patients you know uh, they are they end up in uh, end stage renal disease and they need uh, renal uh, replacement therapy okay so renal, what is renal replacement therapy of course we are going to discuss this thing in detail like for example anything which you are giving to the patient uh, which is basically function uh, functioning as uh, the function of kidney for example dialysis 
or even transplant. So most of these patients, you know, they end up in renal replacement therapy. So of course, dialysis or transplant. So uh, when the patients, they have this, this adult polycystic kidney disease, so they know like they are going to be have in end-stage renal disease uh, sooner or later. So they put them uh, previously on the list that, you know, at some time in their life, like in developed world, uh, they know like they, they need like uh, renal transplant at some stage. So of course, uh, renal transplant is the ultimate option in these patients. Other than that, that you know, I told you there is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, okay? Autosomal uh, recessive uh, polycystic um, kidney uh, disease is there, right? So, of course, like this one is like very much uh, less common than, than the, that one, the previous one. So, it is 1 in 20,000 patients, they have this thing. So uh, what happens in these patients, basically, they have enlarged kidney kidneys prenatally. So you can say like they can be uh, diagnosed prenatally, okay, before birth, okay. So prenatal diagnosis of is done, okay. So the prenatal pre diagnosis by enlarged kidneys, okay, can be done. And most of them that, you know, they, they die perinatally, uh, by respiratory failure okay and any patients who survive basically the perinatal period they die, die because of congestive heart failure hypertension and they 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 need like dialysis kidney or liver transplant things like this so uh, like you are not going to see these patients uh, usually around you right because most of them you know they die uh, so this one is present on chromosome number six no need to remember by the way because I have never seen a question coming from this one in any any exam paper. So what happens is, by the way, uh, uh, perinatally, you know, when they do ultrasound, uh, uh, there is salt and pepper appearance of kidneys on the on the renal ultrasound. Okay, and uh, why they need liver transplant because they have congenital hepatic fibrosis, which lead to portal hypertension, and it have a very 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 poor prognosis. So. Uh, that's the point that you know we are not going to discuss this thing in detail and the last thing which uh, for this lecture which we are going to discuss is um, uh, medullary uh, medullary uh, sponge disease uh, medullary sponge kidney inside. okay so uh, now again this is a common condition guys so first of all it is autosomal uh, dominant okay and uh, uh, again the same story like apkd it is diagnosed in uh, fourth or fifth decade or you can say 40 when the a patient is in 40s or 50s and what happens in these patients like basically there is multiple cystic dilatation uh, it is medullary disease so in the medulla okay so uh, in the medulla or medulla have multiple uh, cystic dilatations okay dilations is there the dilatations is there okay so they in the medulla of course that's why it is called as medullary response disease so how they present uh, they have they may have renal stones okay uh, they may have hematuria okay and they may have recurrent uh, recurrent UTIs and uh, <laughs> uh, they have so much renal stones like it is believed like uh, around 10% of the patients who have renal stone 10% uh, of uh, people 10% patients uh, of renal stones uh, basically have uh, medullary cystic disease okay so cystic disease so this is important okay uh, so like stone formation is very common this is the important point uh, so uh, you know when we do x-ray uh, like when we do imaging in this, this one or abdominal x-ray uh, you can found that they have uh, nephro uh, calci calcinosis okay so around 50% of the patients they have this thing 
So, and most of the time, you know, it is an incidental finding, like the X-ray is done for something else and they found like the patient have this thing. So most of the them, they have incidental finding. Okay, uh, the diagnosis is basically, uh, uh, we can do intravenous pyelography. Okay, like uh, we give a contrast medium uh, and that basically contrast show, uh, like fill up the medulla, the cyst in the medulla. Okay, and it gave us some sort of you can say radial pattern. Okay, like you know, it, it's like the kidneys look like a bouquet of flower, you know, like the shape of the bouquet of the flower. So they look like uh, this thing. Uh, okay, so uh, we call this this thing as like this is an important thing to remember in this one. Okay, so when we give them contrast medium, it looks like uh, intravenous pyelogram, pyelogram IVP. Okay, they show. Uh, they they show as a uh, bouquet of flowers okay and uh, one more thing you know you can remember about this condition is uh, on histology histological appearance histological uh, histologically they they give uh, swiss cheese appearance okay just logically they didn't uh, do this thing so uh, the, the important thing to mention about this condition is uh, number one this one doesn't cause renal failure okay so that's a very good thing so the only thing which we have to do in this one is to treat this thing recurrent UTIs okay so that's all about this one it doesn't cause uh, renal failure but it do cause recurrent UTIs so treat them okay rest guys uh, there is nothing left in this topic so thank you so much for listening